Hey everybody, this is Tommy G. And this is PJ. Yes. <laughs> and in we... full flex. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we are here. Ugh. Guns out. And we are here in Phoenix, Arizona. Came back for just one. Just one little piece. And this wonderful city. We uh, are going to be playing the... Let's see the uh, what's on the roster here. It looks like the Arctics are coming in today, Pete. <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> and uh, the Arctics. I know it's one of your faves. One of your faves. Or no. They're all right. Maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> <All right. laughs> well, take a look at these Arctics, Arctics here. They're not doing all that great right now. Um, and uh, there's a few, let me tell you a few faces on there. Artichoke sample board. Big off-season move by these these, Arct these uh, Arctics to try and get somebody good. She's the A-ranked um, uh, uh, person. Right fielder. Right fielder. <laughs> Making 14.4, the 27 year old. So that, that's supposed to help turn them around a little bit. Wow. They also have our old friend, Rhonda Horn, uh, in from the, uh, from the, she played with the Cats last year. Pete, and I looked up before the game, Rhonda Horn, I believe, she's ranked number eighth overall in the last two seasons. So career stats, she's, for these last two years we've been in Phoenix, she's ranked number eight overall. I believe it. She's a solid player. Um, I think the big problem right now for Rhonda Horn is uh, she's got a big price tag. Uh, she's moved around. We we saw her in uh, in uh, with the f uh, free, but no, with the Overdogs. overdogs yeah. uh, I'm sorry, the, the the Overdogs. She was playing with the Overdogs, like Tommy pointed out. She played for the Sandcats last year. Now she's at the Arctic. So I think she's yeah. You know, she'd like to find a place where she could call home, but I think she's going to have to drop that price to do that, Tom. Yep. Well, she's here for a little while at least. And they also, speaking of uh, overdogs, the other player that they picked up, Burt Burt. Uh, he used to play for the Dogs last year. He was uh, he was one and all last year. He had 3.86 ERA, as you can see there. It's 9.72 this year, not as good. But uh, uh, yeah, Burt's... Burt's brings us to today's game, this team. Um, hold on one second here. If we're looking at the schedule, they and they just came off, let me tell you, standings. Thing, loss against the last place buzzards of all teams and it's just uh, I, I just noted one thing here too I was looking at the standings talk about being a Houston fan both their teams the Crocodons and the Jacks are first place if you're out in Colorado both your teams are dead last <laughs> the buzzards and the warblers Eesh. yikes well these are the times that will try a fan soul you know I mean if you're a fan you're in it you know, through thick and thin, good and bad. So uh, the season's not over. We still got a little time before we hit the midpoint. And uh, you know, a roll, and the two Houston teams can start to uh, stumble again. We've said it before, Tommy. You don't want to be playing your best baseball at the beginning of the season. Yeah, that's true. Well, and one one thing to note here too, we also got Billy the Boink. His his shoulder was hurting after this last game. They uh, got him a little bit of surgery. I worked on his shoulder a bit, and he's he's feeling better now. He's at, he's up at, his arms ranked at 83, so that that's good news. It'll be good to see him out there today playing for them. But that brings us again to today's. Yeah. Oh, oh I, and I even, figure I'm I figure at his age, we're just going to ride him right into the ground. So right. When we're by the end of this season, he'll be he'll be done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me tell you a little bit about the last game. I forgot to mention that Pete uh, Buster Big started off the scoring in the top of the second <clears throat> when he drives one way out over the center field wall into the greenery. And the B-Wolves grabbed the first point in this hot contest against the Houston Jacks. Speaking of those Houston teams, uh, it was up one nothing pretty quick, and it was a great start. And then, in the top of the third, Hanley Dick Stare, the number two shortstop, gets into the action when Barry Ozone tees this floating changeup right over the middle. Dick Stares punishes him for the mistake and puts one out to 2 nothing. Pete Dick Stares is on a home run tear, isn't he? Yeah, he is. Yeah, I mean, uh, he's doing he's doing very well. And there he is, crossing the plate. Good handling. Anyway, Deshaun Lamont needed to have a good night as well. Uh, and boy, did he answer the call. He decides to punish Ozone as well, starting a K run here in the bottom of the third. He drops a formidable Jack Cracker. Then in the bottom of the fourth. And he follows that immediately by striking out Juice Jackson. But he didn't just play defense. He got he got in on the offense when he takes his first pitch by Ozone and puts it high. 
and just far enough over the wall. It's his first home run of the season, and he contributed in every way possible to, to make this one happen. I've never seen such a performance from the Beeble's fourth string starter. No, I haven't too, but uh, I mean, I, well, well I, I think I have. Deshaun Levon is uh, one of the most underrated pitchers in the league. Even last year, we talked about it. Uh, earlier in the season that uh, our pitchers were struggling and, and it was Deshaun Levon who came out and had a stellar uh, outing and that kind of seemed to spur the rest of the pitching staff on. So, yeah, he can be a spark plug at times, but again, because it's not consistent, because he's not, you know, he doesn't carry the team a lot. Um, it's kind of uh, sporadic when, when Ortiz will, will put the team on his back and they'll carry him across the finish line. Uh, he doesn't get a lot of respect, but I, I think he's a very solid uh, pitcher. I, I'd even say a two or a three if you really, really thought about it. Yeah. Well, I mean, he continues to pace in, in the in the, bleh, in the bottom of the six when he strikes out Yamamoto. And then Buster Biggs caps off the scoring with this grounder past the mound, bringing Steve Monstor home from second. And the B-Wolves garner an eight nothing lead. Uh, you know, Levon then does another thing we'd never seen him do, and that's go the whole game striking out Cracker again in the bottom of the ninth. And the B-Wolves shut the Jacks out by an impressive eight run difference. It was what a huge win. Yeah, it was. It was an offensive explosion uh, to say the least. Well, and what cracks them too? I literally earlier I said something about Ronda Horn. Ronda Horn, no, she played for the she was for the Overdogs last season. Uh, she did not play for for uh, the Cats. That was uh, Marsha Brown. I was saying. Oh, okay. She's she's yeah. ranked eighth overall. Marsha Ronda Horn. She's she's good, but she's not quite there. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that brings us to this game, game seventeen of forty four, and we have hosted the Houston Arctic to our five and eleven, second to last place bullpen beast. A lot of power, you could tell there, Pete. So we got to get we got to be careful throwing the wrong pitches to the Arctic's. But if you can get those past them, they they don't have great contact. Um, they got good a good rotation and good pen, so their pitching is a little bit formidable. They're going to be going against our ten to six B wolves contact specialist. They're going to start their right-hander, starting pitcher Corey Spencer. Doesn't throw the ball all too hard, but he's got good enough junk, and he's really accurate. He's 1-3 in three on the season thus far with a 6.1 ERA and a 1.81 whip beat. Yes, sir, and backing him up, the notable players, uh, Barron's in right field, who's got a, a very good power. He's got better than average uh, ability to connect and uh, better than average speed, but he's only hitting a paltry 186 this season, Tom, huh. with one home run. Rhonda Horn over at first base. We talked a lot about her in the pre pregame. Uh, again, very good power. She's got about average ability to connect, though, and uh, an excellent speed on the base pass. She's hitting 317, a respectable 317 with two home runs. And then uh, Sample Moore, the rookie sensation Sample Moore is playing. They got her listed as playing left field. She is tense right now, Tom. She's underperforming her her uh, her expectations. Um, she's got. Uh, She's got uh, better than average power, uh, pretty good co- ability to connect, and uh, better than average speed, but she's underperforming in all three areas. She's only hitting 275, but she does have three home runs on the season, Tom. Oh, well, yeah, and those, the two ladies are uh, two of the top three notable players. Uh, weren't on the team last year. You know, Horn was out in uh, Santa Monica at the Overdogs, and Sample Moore out in Hawaii for the Burners, so uh, it's a new-look team. <laughs> And they're going to be they're going to be going against our top starter. Boy, I'm excited to see him since he, he got hurt in that last game, and he really didn't have the best game either. So he's going to really want to come out here and just put these guys away. Hurley Bender, the right-hander, throws the ball hard, puts crazy junk on it, and he's super accurate. He's only one and two this season, so he's trying to even that off tonight or today. He's got a 5.24 ERA and a 1.61 WHIP. Pete, pretty good. Yes, sir. And I, I wish they would put up the uh, strikeouts because I'd yeah. love to be able to see. Uh, Spencer versus Bender in the strikeouts. I have to, I have to believe Bender's got the edge in that. But uh, going behind uh, uh, Hurley Bender will be a Laura Franco, the first baseman. She's tense right now. She's got amazing, uh, excellent power. She's got uh, pretty good uh, ability to connect and pretty good speed on the base pass. She's underperforming all those just a little bit. She's hitting 359 though on the season with three home runs. Hanley Dexter is the resurging superstar shortstop. He's got about average power. He's got excellent ability to connect and, and excellent speed on the base pass. He's in 295 with seven dingers on the season, Tommy. <laughs> Ruby Green, the third baseman, she's locked in right now, and she's uh, she's got 
uh, better than average power, uh, very good ability to connect, and uh, better than average speed. And she's outperforming her career stats right now, and she's hitting 405 on the season with two home runs. Oh, yeah, and Dexter is uh, tied for second, three-way tie for second for home run, most home runs in the league this season. Yeah, he got off to a, a kind of a hot and cold start, and uh, I don't know if he's actually been able to uh, rise above that. We've seen him have really great games and then turn around and go oh for the entire the next game. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so yeah. I, I'm hoping uh, he did. He, the last game against the Jacks, he was a he was an offensive dynamo, and I'm hoping he can kind of bring some of that into this game against the Arctics. Let's hope so. We're getting the lineup from the assistant coach. Looks a little something like this: Handley. Handley Dexter is going to start off at first, start off at shortstop, I'm sorry, bad first. He'll be followed closely by Billy LeBoink, who will play right field. Getting back from that new surgery, showing off the arm, the gun. Laura Franco is going to bat third, but playing first base. She's a little bit tense, uh, but she's going to play anyway, because even tense, she's dangerous. Ruby Green is going to play third base tonight. She's locked in. She's filling in for Bertha Banks, but she's locked in, which is why she's got the nod, and she's going to be our... Our cleanup hitter. Batting right behind her fifth, Buster Biggs. He'll play left field. Batting sixth is Magic Moore. He's also locked in, so we're good to see good things from him. Gina Torrens will play second base and bat seventh. And it looks like they're going to go with Eliza Peck, you think, here? Or or Monstor? Ooh, uh, um, did Monstor play against the Jacks? I don't recall. I think he did. Did he? Okay, we'll go uh, We'll go with Peck then. Okay, Peck's We'll gonna, go with Peck. Peck's going to, well, yeah, we should Peck play. And then... Batting ninth is Hurley Bender, and he'll be on the mound throwing a four finger, two finger, cut finger, curveball, and slider. Here we go, Pete. Spitter, whatever. <laughs> right. Throw us whatever you give him. That's right. Beautiful day game at uh, Red Rock Park. They got the roof open, so nice, nice breeze blowing in. Hopefully that won't stop the balls from flying out. Put the smell out of here. <laughs> That's right. It's wafting around. It's thick enough you can cut it with a knife. <laughs> Going for the Arctics, we're going to have Meza at third base, Horn at first, Barron in right field, Savage at short, Samplemore playing left field, Flores in center field, Jensen catching Earp at second base, and Spencer pitching. Savage and Samplemore are both tense. Coming up in the top of the first, it's Chard Meza, Rhonda Horn, and Dave Barron. Hurley Bender is going to take the mound and bring his 5.24 ERA with him. Look at the sea of white out there in the stands. No, no. The third base. Yeah, it's, well, both teams wear got white here. <laughs> no, it's just Chard yeah. Meza. Chard Meza, the third baseman, hit 176, three home runs, and seven RBIs as neutral and fit. Bender's first pitch is in there for called strike. Strike one, and we're underway here, Tommy. Top of the first. Outside. That one's outside. Ball one. I'm seeing Arctic shirts, B Wolf shirts. Ball two. That guy's got no shirt at all. Look at that. Two balls <laughs> and a strike. It's only the first <laughs> inning. Calm down, dude. <laughs> There's a roller. Gina Torrens will pick that up, make the throw over to uh, Frank at first base for the first down. Rhonda Horn, the third baseman's neutral and fit. She's hitting 317, two home runs, three RBIs on the season. She changed uniforms between the <laughs> intro and batting. That was crazy. Swing and a miss. Bender put that one right past her. No balls, one strike with one out. Bender delivers. There's a roller to Bender. We'll pick it up, make the throw to Franco for the second out. And oh, Ronda Horn is taking a hit. There, Dave Barron in his whites, hitting 186 with one home run, five RBI. Now he's, now he's in his blacks. What's going on there? That's Dave crazy. Dave Barron playing right field for the Arctics. Two outs. That's right in there for cold strike, strike one. No balls, one strike. Dave Barron playing right field for the Arctics. That's in there for called second strike, and Barron finds himself in the hole. No balls, two strikes with two outs. Bender delivers. Oh, just a little high there. One ball, two strikes. Bender throwing his 10th pitch right here. Oh, just a little inside, and the count is evened up at two and two. Oh. That one's outside, and the count has gone full. Three balls, two strikes with two outs to Dave Barron. Nobody on. That one's fouled off along the first baseline. We'll re-rack re and do it again. Three balls, two strikes to Barron. 
That's fouled Oof. off along the first baseline as well. Wow. Barron is making Bender pitch. He's up to 13. This will be his 14th pitch there. Oh. Missed on the low outside corner, and Bender has walked That's Dave so Barron. So there's a runner at first base with two outs. Kingsley Savage is 10th, but fit. Savage playing shortstop. He's hitting two home, 200 with three home runs and eight RBIs. Swing and a miss. Savage was out in front of that one. No balls, one strike. Barron with some speed over at first. That's in there for a called second strike, and Bender's going right at him. No balls, two strikes with two outs. Throw over to first, and Barron's able to get back in time. Bender looks in. No balls, two strikes. Popped up behind home plate. The bat shatters. <laughs> Eliza Peck and the umpire occupy the same space. I don't know how they do that. <laughs> Henley Dexteris, Billy LeBlanc, and Laura Franco coming up in the bottom of the first. Corey Spencer with a 6.11 ERA will take the mound for the Arctics. Now battle, the shortstop, Henley Dexteris. The name says it all, Pete. We're underway here with the Beebles hitting. First, first Corey Spencer pitches in there for a strike. Going on the count. Inside. Second one misses inside. Ball one. Looks like Dexter is going to get him throwing some pitches. He follows it off down the first base line. It's a K-man against the tough out. One and two the count. He pulls that one foul again as well. Corey Spencer hanging in there. Nope. Throws into the ball. Good patience by Henley Dexter. Six pitches on the outside corner ball. Three. We got ourselves a full count. Fans like Handley at the plate. And he walks him, walks him. Hey, wait, wait to get in there and make a pitch, Handley. Yes, sir. And coming up, Billy LeBoint, the right fielder, likes the high pitch. He's neutral and fit, hitting 438 with two home runs and 18 RBIs. Dexteris with a lot of speed over. First pitch is in there for cold strike. Strike one. That one smashed. That's going into the gap between right and center field, and everybody's running. And Handley Dexteris is coming all the way around from first base, and he's going to score easily. Billy LeBoink with another double, Tommy. He's hitting gangbusters, that guy. Hey, hey. Wow, I way to get out there in front quickly, B. Wolves. And he's, now you got Billy LeBoink at second base, and Laura Franco's up. Takes her first pitch in there for a strike. And Laura Franco's a little bit tense, but uh, Corey Spencer is a little, a little bit cautious throwing to her. He's got great accuracy. Puts that one right where he needs to. That's a diving stop. Not in time. He throws to third and doesn't get a beat. Nice infield single. Well, all right. Stepping into the box. Ruby Green, the first baseman's locked in and fit. She's hitting 405 with two home runs, seven RBIs. Green is playing third base, though, today. There's a sacrifice bunt down the first baseline, and they just get Ruby Green, but Billy LeBoint crosses the plate, giving the B-Wolves a 2 to nothing lead here in the bottom of the first. Beautiful bunt down the first baseline there. And with only one out, you got Laura Franco at second base. Now, of course, Spencer's looking a little bit tense, and that's a little hit to third base. Made some bare hands if those at the first. Gets two outs, but he advances Laura Franco down the third base. Yes, sir, and in steps Magic Moore, the center fielder. He's locked in and fit. He's hitting 404, three home runs, 11 RBIs on the season. First pitch is in there for a cold strike. Strike one. Ball, that's inside. That one's inside. One and one to Magic Moore. Moore puts that right up the middle in the center field for a clean single. Wow. Ruby Green will cross, not Ruby Green. No, no maybe it was Ruby Green. Cross the plate, three, making it three to nothing. Wow, what a big first inning so far. Three to nothing, bottom of the first. I wouldn't have thought they'd come out this quick. Gina Torrens pops one up in the center field, but that's going to be an easy fly ball caught by Flores, who waves him off. Three down. Yep, but the uh, B-Wolves pick up three runs on three hits. So as we head into the top of the second, Artichoke Samplemore, Nick's Flores, and Burton Jensen are going to face Bender, who threw 17 pitches, had a walk, and has dropped his ERA to 5.01. Yeah, you can see those jerseys. They look white from this angle, and then they catch it on this camera, and they're actually dark. How the light catches him. <laughs> Number 50, Hurley Bender in command here. Getting ready to host 18th pitch to start off the second inning. And it's in there for a strike. Going with the count to Artichoke Samplemore. Like we said, play for the Burners last year in Hawaii. Trying to turn this team around. She's looking a little tense, though. Bender comes right at her with two quick strikes. Good hitter, Artichoke Samplemore, when she's hitting well. Tries to get her chase. A slider almost got away from him. Good stop there by Peck. That one's hit hard over the head of Laura Franco. Billy LeBoink's going to throw that in to keep her at first base. Good single by Samplemore. 
to start off the top of the second. And up comes Nick Flores. Center field, a good contact. But against left-handers, he's facing one of the best right-handers in the game. Swing and a miss on a nice split finger inside to Flores. The second one swing and miss on that slider on the outside. And he's going to command again with two strikes. That's where the problem happened last time. Mostly a power hitter as Flores. Gets a piece of it foul near his foot, third baseline. There goes a run, the throw, and they're not going to get her. And Samplemore takes second base now with no outs. And Flores still hanging in there. Rolls one down the line, but that's foul ball. Franco reaches for it, but it's kind of a moot point. That one's hit hard down the left field line, but luckily that's kind of drift foul deep into the corner. And Flores doesn't go down easy. Now he's, he's hitting him off. It seems like these batters are hitting Bender, but they're not doing a ton of damage yet. Another foul ball. Hardly Bender. 30th pitch here to Nick Flores. That's a little liner to Green, who looks at second, but throws to first, get that first out. Sample board had to come back. Couldn't take third because the lane was closed. Burton Jensen comes up at 196 on the season. Likes his pitches in the bottom half. It's also a tough out. That one's up near his elbows, misses ball one, one will count. That one's in there for a strike, one apiece. Now the safety's off for Burton Jensen. And he didn't swing at that one either. That's uh, two quick strikes. Tough out, though. So we'll see where this goes. It's a hard one to Gina Torrance. She's going to go over the only place she can at first base for that second out. And we got two down with the runner at third. Arctic's Schnitzel Erp is hoping to capitalize here and get them back in this game with a single. He's a normally a power hitter. Really better looking good out there today. Throw the 35th pitch. Been there for a strike on one account. Top of the set. Three nothing. B Wolves. That one drifts a little too far outside for a ball or even a one apiece. Nope, that one misses on the inside corner and we're two and one. Come on. Pushing the foot. That one's low. Hit a liner straight to Magic Moore. And they're going to throw that one in. And they get that single they were looking for. It's now 3 1. And the Arctics are back in this. Number 12. Up comes Corey Spencer, hitting 500 for a pitcher. Really must have been a, a lucky swing because he's not really great at, at power or hitting or any of that. So one and one now with a not slow runner at first base, but two outs. There's swing and a strike two. Really better to be able to put him away here in 42nd pitch. Pops that one up. It's foul. Souvenir in the third row. Still one and two to count. Ooh, misses outside ball. Doesn't chase. And Hurley Bender is going to have to hope, hope to get up. There he goes, the strike. <laughs> he didn't like that call, but it doesn't matter. All right, as we head into the bottom of the second, the score is B-Wolves 3, Arctics 1. Coming up for the B-Wolves, Eliza Peck, Hurley Bender, and Hanley Dexteras. Corey Spencer's thrown 18 pitches with a walk and given up three hits. Eliza Peck's catching today. She's neutral and fit, hitting 156 on the season with a home run, three RBIs. Spencer delivers. That smash down the first base line, but Ronda Horn's able to pick it up and make the run over to first for the first out. Yeah, one, one down. One pitch, one out. Hurley Bender comes up with a zero average on the season. Not a very good contact here. He's got fair power, though. He's taking him out. He took one out last year in in uh, Seattle, or Tacoma for that one. First two pitches in for a strike, and quickly Corey Spencer that came in has got his nemesis behind that one misses one and two to count another high one 94 miles an hour by Corey Spencer better hits that one back oh he could the comebacker couldn't quite pick it up that's gonna be grabbed by the shortstop and he doesn't get it in time Pete nice single by an unlikely source yes sir Hanley next nears are back at the top of the lineup locked in and fit he's uh he walked his first time up so he doesn't get an actual at bat throw over to first to get Dexteris back to first base one out, runner at first. First pitch is in there for a called strike. Strike one. That one's outside, ball one. One ball, one strike to Hanley Dexteris. No. That's popped up into center field. The center fielder is calling for it. Flores makes the catch for the second out. Bender's back at first, so two outs with a runner at first base. Up comes Billy LeBoink. One for one on the day with a double RBI. He's got Hurley Bender at first base, throws over. Doesn't quite get him. 
I don't know why they think Curly Bender is going to be a steel throw. Pulls that one into their dugout. Oh, one the count to really the point. Hit hard down the line. A diving could not be stopped. Hurley Bender's making his way for third peak. And he's going to get in there. Slid. Way to heads up running. Hurley. Yes, sir. Bender's got speed. They, you know, Laura Franco at first base is tense, but Fitz is one for one with a single today. Runners at first and third now with two outs. Bender's got some speed, but uh, LeBoink's a little slow. First pitch is in there for a cold strike. There's popped up in the right field. Everybody's going to keep running just in case. And the right fielder, Barron's under it to make the catch for the third out. So uh, Arctics are able to avoid uh, catastrophe. It's 3 1 B Wolves as we head into the top of the third. Chard Meza 0 for 1. Ronda Horn 0 for 1. And Dave Barron with a walk. Bender's at 44 pitches and one strikeout, one walk. Now batting the third baseman. Wow. Chard Meza, <laughs> the third baseman's 0 for 1, though, this uh, today. Yeah, that's, I didn't realize Bender threw so many pitches in that second inning. Now it's crazy. That's in it for called strike. Strike one. Like my partner pointed out, they foul off a lot of pitches. That one's inside. Ball one. One ball, one strike to Meza. Meza's playing third base for the Arctics. That one's popped up into right field, and LeBoyne's able to get there and make the catch for the first out. Ronda Horn, the third baseman's tense, but Fitch, he's 0 for 1 today. Hitting 311. Made that play in the second inning. First pitch is in it for a cold strike. Strike one. No balls, one strike, one out. Top of the third. That's in it for a cold second strike. And quickly, Horn is in the hole. No balls, two strikes. Nobody on base. That one's in the dirt. Ball one. Peck was able to keep it in front of her, though. One ball, no two strikes. It's fouled off. One ball, two strikes with one out. Bender up to 51 pitches. That's in there for Cole. <laughs> Third strike. Ronda Horn doesn't like it. She's going to jaw back a little bit. But that's a second strike out of the day. Dave Barron, the right fielder, was up. Walked his first time up, so doesn't have an official at bat just yet. There's a roller, that'll be the Laura Franco, and she's gonna make the run over for the third out. So one, two, three, we're heading into the bottom of the third. B-Wolves, three runs on five hits. Arctics, one run on two hits. Ru Ruby Green's first at bat, then Buster Biggs, 0 for 1. Magic Moore, 1 for 1. Spencer's at 31 pitches with a walk and five hits. Ruby Green is locked in and fit, known as an RBI man around the around the league. Got that. Sack bunt in the first yeah. inning. And 405 on the season. First pitch in for strike. Second pitch in for ball. One piece, bottom of third, 3 1. She reaches out, punches it, and that's going to be a little leaguer in the left field. She's going to hold up at second at first base, though. Sample more grabs it quickly. Good single by Ruby Green. Yes, sir. Buster Biggs, the left fielder's neutral and fit. He's 0 for 1 today. Runner at first base with no outs. Buster Biggs, the left fielder, steps in. First pitch is in there for called strike. Strike one. Oh, busted. That's popped up on the infield. The second baseman's calling everybody off to first. So one out with Ruby Green at first base. Bad choice of hitting there by Buster Biggs. Magic Moore's one for one, though, on the day. Let's see if he can get Ruby Green a little further along the baseline. Hits it hard and up near the hands. It's a nice single out in center field. Clean single. Each runner advances. I got runners at first and second with one out. Yes, sir. And in steps Gina. Gina Torres at the second baseman. She's neutral and fit. Runners at first and second with one out. Pitch is high. Ball one. One ball with no strikes. That one's high. Ball two. Two and oh to Gina Torres. Spencer's at 39 pitches. Delivers his 40th right here for a called strike. Two balls in a strike with one out. There's a smash, and that's going all the way into center field. Unfortunately, mm. Flores is going to make the catch. And even though I had my finger on the button, they still weren't on for. They should have been on the base where I could have tagged up, but they didn't. <laughs> Eliza Peck, 0 for 1, got the lowest batting average on the Beagles at 152. He's got runners at first and second with two outs. That one's outside, ball one, good patience. Corey Spencer throwing his 43rd pitch. Inside makes it in for a strike. We're now at one apiece. That went way too high. But good patience here by Eliza Peck. 
That one's low for ball three. Hitter's pitch. Three and one count. She's out ahead of it. Pulls into her, the other team's dugout. Now it's a full count. K-Man steps in there. She smashes it past the beat. And that is going to bring the runner around home. She slides in. Ruby Green makes it 4-1. Way to go. Way, nice RBI by Eliza Beck. Yes, sir. Nice hit. Hurley Bender, the starting pitcher, is one for one with a single. Runners at first and second. Peck with, does not have a lot of speed. That one's fouled off along the third baseline. Out of play. No balls. One strike to Bender. No, that's high. That one's high. Ball one. One ball. One strike. That's popped up into left field with two outs. Everybody's running. Samplemore is able to get under it and make the catch for the third out, but the B-Bulls add one more, making it 4-1 to one as we head in at the top of the fourth. Kingsley Savage 0-1, for Artichoke Samplemore 1-1, one one, and Nick's Flores 0-1. Benders at 53 pitches with two strikeouts, a walk, and giving up two now hits. Number 45. Kingsley Savage has been here before. He went down 0-1, hit 196. And Hurley Bender lets go for that first pitch at foul ball on the first base line to Savage. We're underway here at the top fourth. 4 1 B Wolves, as Pete says. It's no one count to Savage. Swings at that foul ball. Another souvenir. And now we are 0 and 2. Bender in command. Does not chase that low away fastball. Does Savage. Good power hitter. Fair contact, but he's looking a little tense. He pops that one up into shallow left center field. Dexterous ranges back and grabs it for the first out. 90 CC catch. <clears throat> Artichoke Samplemore, one for one with a single, doing what she can in Tacoma. I know there's a lot of Samplemore jerseys that were sold this year when they picked her up. First pitch to her is a curveball, and now she's ready. It's 0-1 the count. Bender's ahead. Second pitch, swing and a miss. On a He's going to come in with a 60th pitch right here. She punches it into the B-Wolves dugout. Still 0-2. Bender in command, looking cool. Gets his swing and another breaking pitch. Hits a foul again. They're they're making contact on Bender. He can't seem to get pitches past them. You know? No, you can't get the strikeout. Again, you can't get the yeah. strikeout. Yeah, he gets those first two strikes, and then they that, that was a single up the center field by Sampleborn. Number two. Yeah, they can't catch up until two strikes, and then they can't miss. It's yeah. like <laughs> they just foul it off, foul it off, foul it off. Yeah, Nick Flores takes the first pitch there for a ball. Hopefully, he hits into a double play here for the B Wolves. Swing and a strike one, one apiece with one out. Samplemore's got enough speed at first base. That one is hit down the line, but luckily that's going to go foul on the first base side. One and two. Bender needs one more. Punches that to Root to two. Oh, Gina Torrance could not quite reach it. And that's going to be a clean single. Throw in the second. So now you got runners at first and second with one out. And Burton Jensen comes up. He's 0 for 1. More power than contact. He likes low pitches. He got runners at first and second. Again, we can get a double play here going. Popped up behind the plate. Eliza Peck's going to go back. Will she get it? And it's too far back. Souvenir, two rows back there to some happy fans. Pops that one up to the right field. Billy LaPointe is going to make the grab. She's going to go for and third. Whip to second it. base for the cutoff. Oh. She does not go. She oh. knows that arm. Yeah, just <laughs> she was standing on second. I thought for sure she was going to take off as soon as he catches. But yeah, I think you're right. I think uh, I think uh, Boyk's reputation got got the better of him. Yep. Schnitzler watches the first one there for ball on the count. That or one to know the count. Now it's now there's a strike. It's one apiece. Bender needs one more out. It's another one in there. Strike two. But this is where the, this is where the damage happens usually. There it is. No. Oh, Alora Franco cannot grab it. Billy LeBoyne going home. Dragmatic. And nobody's going to come home. Now the bases are loaded. Again, they get those two strikes, and then that's yeah. when the bad stuff happens. And the last two two times, I got two strikes. Bender, would he misses, and he misses over the heart of the plate. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, I don't know what's going on, <laughs> but yeah, right over the freaking heart of the plate. Check swing, strike one. Inside, no swing, strike two. Bender's trying to put away. Oh, just misses inside. He's trying to put away Corey Spencer, who's up here today. Swinging with strike three. Way to get out of that early with the bases loaded. Woo! Okay, so as we go into the bottom of the fourth, Beagle's holding on to that four to one lead. Hanley Dexter's up. Walk Billy LeBoy, two for two with a double. Alora Franco, one for two. Spencer's at 50 pitches. 
And like next there's the shortstops neutral and fit. Oh, for one today. Known as a tough out in a utility player. Walked his first time up. He did his average is up to 290 now. That pitch is way outside. Where Spencer, like we said, looking a little bit tense. That one comes down. 2 and 0 oh to Dexter. It's a little hard swing. That's a little Texas leaguer, but it doesn't get over ahead of Earp, who ranges back to get it. One out. That's not. Billy the Boy's the right fielder's new trophy. Likes the high pitch. Two for two today. He's hitting a cover off the ball. Takes the strike. Strike one. Ooh, check swing ball. Evens the count at one and one. Allen's inside. Ball two. Ball outside. Allen's outside ball three. Three and one to Billy LeBoy. Allen just catches the outside corner. Three balls, two strikes to LeBoy. Spencer looks a little afraid of LeBoy. That one's high up into the air. Unfortunately, it's not going to have enough juice. Flores just at the start of the warning track is able to make the catch for the second out. Well, he had him throwing to him. Yep. Laura Franco, one for two on the day. Both the pitcher and the batter looking a little tense. First pitch in there for a strike, only on the count to Franco. Second pitch, outside court, misses the ball. Bottom of the fourth, 4-1 B-Wolves. Franco ah. hits a little roller to Savage at shortstop. Double pump, throw to first, three down. So one, two, three in the bottom of the fourth. As we head into the top of the fifth, Arctic's one run on five hits. B-Wolves, four runs on eight hits. Chard Meza, 0 for 2. Ronda Horn, 0 for 2 with a strikeout. Dave Barron, 0 for 1 with a walk. Benders at 76 pitches in the fifth third, inning time. <laughs> Number He's five. going for those strikeouts, and maybe he should just throw them stuff he could hit. Chad Meza, the <laughs> third baseman, steps in. Oh, for the day, hitting 170. There's a roller that's going to be picked up by Ruby Green. Will pit, make the throw across the field to Laura Franco for the first out. One pitch, one out. Way to go. Ronda Horn, the third baseman's tense but fit. Oh, for two today against Hurley Bender. First pitch is fouled off along the third baseline. No balls, one strike to Horn. There's a roller. Oh, that's going to be to Dexter as well. Barehanded, make the throw, oh. but not in time to Ruby Horn. And a little bit of a misstep when he started out. Dave Barron, the right fielder, 0 for 1 with a walk. Ruby, Ronda Horn at first base. I'm sorry, one out. Ronda Horn with speed over there at first base. First pitch is in there for a cold strike. Strike one. Bender just passed 80. <gasps> oh, that's a throw that got away from Harley Bender and Rhonda Horns going around toward third. Franco's making the throw. That Horn is into third safely. So an errant throw on a pickoff move allowed Rhonda Horn to go from first to third. Dave Barron now, no balls, one strike with one out. Oh, There's grab a it. Shot. Hey, and what a grab. Go. A diving grab by uh, Hanley Dexterra oh. to save. A run uh, for the second out. Ronda Horn still at third base, but two outs now, and Kingsley Savage steps in, the shortstop. Bender delivers in there for called strike. Strike one. No balls, one strike with two outs. That one was outside, and Savage was anticipating that pitch. That one's low ball, two. Two balls and a strike to King, Kingsley Savage. Ronda Horn standing at third base. Oh. That one's high, ball three. Three balls and a strike now to Savage. Two outs in the top of the fifth. That's in there for cold strike, and the count has gone full now. Three balls, two strikes with two outs in the top of the fifth. That's in there for cold third strike. Way to go, Hurley Bender. What They closed that down. Wow, was that good. Bottom of the fifth. Ruby Green, Buster Biggs, Magic Moore. Green, one for one. Biggs, 0 for two and more. Two for two. Spencer's at 62 pitches, giving up a walk and eight hits. The score is still six to one. Ruby Green, the first baseman's locked in and fit. And I'm tripping over my tongue. So it's four to one, not six to one. Four to one. <laughs> ball inside to Ruby Green. That's in it for cold strike. One ball, one strike to Green. That one's low, ball two, two balls and a strike. Who just catches the top of the strike zone for a called strike. Two balls, two strikes to Green. That's popped up into right center field, and the right fielder's calling for it, makes the catch. Dave Barron in right field, one out. They both call. 
The big's 0 for 2, hoping to get get back into this thing here. Buster not having the season he had last season. A little floater inside, not quite 80 miles an hour. Strike one, no one to cock. A floater outside, misses. Ball one, evened up one piece. Hits a liner down the first baseline, foul. One and two to Buster Biggs. That one's right in there. Big smashes it down the third baseline, and it's going to land in order to sample more. Can't get it. Way to go, Buster Biggs, getting on there. Nice outfield single. Yes, sir. And in steps the center fielder, Magic Moore. He's two for two today, locked in and fit. He's got two singles and an RBI. Got a runner at first base with one out. Oh, no. Buster Biggs took off with the pitch and was able to get into second, but Magic Moore is thrown out at first for the second out. So two outs runner at second base and Torrin stepping in. Tia Torrin's 0 for 2, but an outfield single will bring in a fifth run for the B-Wolves. Ah. So it's an infield roller to run. Horn is going to run and toss, and he drops it. Wow. The drop fills to the pitcher, drops the ball. She's safe. Runners in the corners with two outs. Eliza Peck, the catcher's neutral fit. One for two today with an RBI. Runners at first and third, as Tommy pointed out. First pitch is in there for a cold strike. Strike one. Two outs, though, in the bottom of the fifth. That one's outside. Ball one. One ball, one strike. Throw over to first base, and Gina Torrens is back. Mm. That's popped up into shallow right field. Everybody's kind of getting there, and Earp, the second baseman, is able to make the catch. So we're heading into the top of the sixth. B Wolves four, Arctics one, Artichoke Samplemore two for two, Nick Flores one for two, and Burton Jensen 0 oh for two. Benders at 87 pitches with four strikeouts, one walk, and giving up two hits. Number 34. Artichoke Samplemore, the right fielder, is two for two today. Oh, I got a pitch against her. With, with two <laughs> singles, yeah. Early Bender closing on 90 pitches. Artichoke Samplemore doing well. First pitch there for strike. Oh, one to count to Samplemore. Second pitch inside corner. That's a little roller back to Bender. He's going to pick up easy toss over to first. One down. That went as about as well as it could have hoped. <laughs> yeah, she hasn't been killing us, but boy, she's been consistent. Yep. Nick's, one for one. Nick's floor is now one for two on the day. Watch the first pitch. Nice pitch in there for a strike. He smiles. <laughs> he liked that first one. Second pitch. Blow away. He does not chase. One piece. One out. In the top of the sixth oh. inning. That one misses low. Inside, ball two, two and one now. Mr. Bender is throwing his 93rd pitch right here. Hit hard up the line. Magic Moore is going to pick that one up and float it into second base. Nick Flores hitting well for the, uh, the Arctics here tonight, Pete. Yeah, I don't like this. I don't like this ump. <laughs> Burton Jensen over to Pete doesn't like this ump. <laughs> doesn't matter though. That one's popped up down the right field the line. That's going to drift foul. Souvenir by Burton Jensen. Hits that one hard to Allure. Franco, who's tags. Catch, Double play. Catch and yes. tag. Yeah. <laughs> Way to go, Laura. We're heading into the bottom of the sixth. Hurley Brender, one for two. Hanley Dexter is 0 for two with a walk. Billy LeBoyne, two for three with a double. Spencer's at 76 pitches, giving up a walk. Nine hits. The B Wolves holding on to that four to one lead. Hurley Bender, the starting pitcher's neutral and fit. One for two with a single. He's in 167 this season. He is. He was like just up, wasn't he? <laughs> First pitch outside corner. Ball one to Hurley Bender. One another count. That one's oh a little bit low. Ball two. He like the up when he's calling against him. Oh, Hurley Bender nails it. In the right center field is going back. Pete, it is gonna be gone. Three rows back. Way to go, Hurley. Not his first rodeo. The pitcher puts points on the board when he hits his first home run. 380 feet in the first RBI of the season. He likes it against these Tacoma teams. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Hannah next there's the shortstop steps in. 0 for 2 with a walk. Known as a tough out utility player around the league. There's a shot. That's Oh, oh that's going to be a tough jump by the third baseman. He's able to knock it down, but he can't make the throw to first. So Hanley Dexterz with an infield single. Both those last batters swung at that first pitch and nailed it. Billy LeBoyne, two for three, the double fast runner at first base and no outs. Outside ball one. He's keeping an eye on the fast runner. That's a pop-up in the left field. Is he going to make it? Artichoke Samplemore comes forward to make that catch. So, uh... Dexterous, let's come back. Alora Franco's tense, but pitches hit one for three today with a single. Corey Spencer's up to 82 pitches, and he's tense right now. 
There's a smash. That'll get up the into center field for a clean single. One for, I mean, uh, runners at first and second now with only one out and Ruby Green stepping in. She's one for two on the day, RBI man. I know this uh, looks like Corey Spence is getting real tense. He's losing velocity and his first pitches have been right down there and they've been capitalizing on it, Pete. That is the way to go. Here comes the runner all the way around from third. They're going to slide in. Way to go next stairs. It's now 6-1. Beatles. Like I said, he throws that first pitch and chooses a meatball. Yeah, and I don't know if he's going to be long for the game. Buster no. Big, there he goes. Buster Big's the left fielder stepping in, but first we're going to have Corey Spencer's going to take a seat. He uh, is leaving with a 7.04 ERA and a two uh, whip. He's got 12 strikeouts, but he was rattling fit. The uh, Beatles were able to get to him. Coming in to relieve Corey Spencer, our, our friend from the Overdogs, Bert Bergerer. Um, Berger, the relief pitcher, has got a 9.72 ERA, a 1.68 whip, 20 strikeouts, but he's already rattled, Tom. <laughs> he's feeling fit. Um, his, he's got uh, pretty good velocity. He's got about a little bit better than average junk and about average accuracy, but all three of those levels he's underperforming, Tom. He's not fully rested. He's, he's pitched recently, uh, or not the, too, not the too distant past, and uh, he's got a four-seam fastball, a curveball, and a changeup. He's going to inherit runners at first and second with only one out. Oh, it's a double switch. Mm -hmm. So what they'll do is they're going to put uh, Bergerer into the eighth hitting spot, and they will change out the catcher, Burton Jensen. The catcher will take a seat, and Colton O'Neill. Colton O'Neill will come in to catch. He's got no errors. He's got a batting average of .080, Tom. <laughs> he's got no home runs. He's feeling neutral and fit. He does. He has less than average speed. He's got a little bit less than average fielding and a little bit less than average arm. So the B Wolf runners should be able to start taking advantage of that. So that catcher, catcher Colton O'Neill, first pitch is in there for called strike. Strike one. Swing and a miss, strike two, and Buster Biggs finds himself in the hole. No balls, two strikes with one out. Bergerer delivers that one outside, ball one. One ball, two strikes. That's outside, the count is evened up, two and two. Runners at first and second. That's a pop fly, and Herp is able to make the catch. The second baseman flips it to second, but everybody's able to get back safe. Not the, not the best day for Buster Biggs. Magic Moore comes up now, they got two outs. That one's the only ball one. Two runners on. Bottom of the six, six one B Wolves. That one's there for strike. We've one apiece for Berger throwing his eighth pitch. Right oh. to him. That's a liner straight to Earp at second. The throw to first, three outs. But the B Wolves put two more on the board, Tommy, making it six to one as we head into the top of the seven. Schnitzel Earp two for two. Colton O'Neill first at bat. And Chard Meza 0 for three. Benders at 95 pitches with four strikeouts a walk and giving up seven hits. Schnitzel Earp's the second baseman is locked in and fit. Two for two with two singles and an RBI. I said Schnitzel Earp, not Schnitzels. <laughs> <laughs> Schnitzel. Top of the seventh. B Wolves. Winning 6-1, to one. the first pitch is in there for called strike, and Bender's velocity starting to take a hit. That's in there for called second strike, and Bender's out in front of Earp. No balls, two strikes. Swing and a miss, and Earp goes down on strikes. What a way to end the day for Hurley Bender. Another strike of Colton O'Neill, the catcher's neutral and fit, hitting point .080, one out. Bender at 98 pitches, but he's locked in and fit. That's in there for a called strike, strike one. Nobody on, one out, top of the seventh. Fuel six, Arctic's one. That one's high, ball one. One ball, one strike with one out. That's in there for called second strike. Two strikes, one ball, and now Bender's starting to show some wear and tear. There's a <laughs> smash foul along the first baseline. One ball, two strikes with one out. Bender up to 102 pitches, making his 103rd here. And that's popped up foul, straight back out of play. One ball, two strikes. Bender delivers outside, but that was anticipated by uh, O'Neill. Count is evened up, two balls, two strikes. That's smashed, that's going into center field. And Magic Moore is able to track it down and make the catch for the second out. Two down, and Shard Meza, who's tense but fit 0 for 3 today, steps into the batter's box. Bender up to 105 pitches. He's <laughs> locked in and fit. 
He is sore. Oh. And that's going to be it. Hey! And they got him at first base. So Bender <laughs> gets through the seventh. <laughs> glory, glory. And <laughs> at the bottom of the seventh, Gina Torrens, Eliza Peck, and Hurley Bender are going to step in. Beeble's winning 6-1. to one. Berger threw eight pitches in his brief no appearance. Gina Torrance, second the second baseman's base. neutral and fit 0-3 for 3 today, but she's hitting 415 on the season with four RBIs. Come on, Gina. No, inside. First pitch is inside, ball one. Allen's in there for called strike. One ball, one strike, and now Bergerer's accuracy is starting to go on him. Allen's high ball two, two balls in the strike. There's a smash, that'll get up into the mid, into center field for a clean single, and Gina Torrens is on first base with nobody out. Way to go, Gina. Eliza Peck up now, one for three with a single and RBI, and they're, they're hanging in there with their old friend Berger. He's losing a lot of his accuracy now. Only 13th pitch inside corner, strike one. Got a fair first base. Oh, she's coming back to first. She's going to slide up. Get a dog on it. Yeah, good timing there by the, by the Arctics to try and get her. Strike two to Eliza Peck. And, ooh, outside corner, ball one, one to the count to Peck. That one up near the hands, good patience. Ball two, 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 one out. That one's there, she pops it up, foul, third baseline, souvenir. Happy fan. Breaks ah. the bat, little roller to Urban, and throws it to first, two down. Two down. Hurley Bender, just locked in and fit, two for three, let him hit? on the single and an RBA. No, 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 you, Does, you get a chip, you want to, yeah, I was going to say. I mean, he's two for three with a home run. Do they just let him hit or no? Um, <laughs> like that's, you're the hitter. Yeah, that's up to you. But he's at 108 pitches, so yeah. I'm not pitching with him no, in the no, eighth. No, yeah. he's, he's, <laughs> he should take, he's take a rest. Um, let me see here. It's going to be uh, Balmer or Foster. I will go poke. All right. Starting pitcher Hurley Bender is going to take a seat. And incoming coming in is going to be Poke Foster. Polk Foster with a 400 batting average and fit. He doesn't have a lot of power, but he's got great uh, ability to con uh, to make an action. Um, and he does not have a lot of speed on the base pass. So he'll be facing off uh, Burt Bergerer. That one's high ball inside. Bergerer with throwing his 20th pitch here. That's inside ball two. Two balls and no strikes with two outs. There's a smash up the middle in the center field. And Poke Foster has gotten on base again, Tom. Way to go, Poke. I like yes, Poke. Sir. I always like Poke, Pete. You know this. <laughs> I do know that. Hadley next to the single a walk. Poke Foster's not going to be stealing second anytime soon. Pitch outside to Hadley next stairs. Oh, no, the count. Hard oh, liner no. straight to Savage for that third out. He gave it a good rip, but mm -hmm. it had to go. Poke Foster going to take a seat. Er... Um, for somebody who somebody for the Beebles. Well, Benson Rushmore. Benson Rushmore. 5.0 ERA, a 1.30 whip, 12 Ks. What else can you say, Pete? Throws the ball hard enough, good enough junk. Not totally accurate. Throws a four-finger, two-finger slide into a curveball. That's a nice little repertorio. Yes, sir. So as we head into the top of the eighth, it's uh, Bewell 6, Arctic 1, Ronda Horn 1 for 3, Dave Barron 0 for 2 with a walk, Kingsley Savage 0 for 3 with a strikeout, Rushmore stepping in with his 5.4 ERA. The first baseman, Ronda Horn. Ronda Horn. There she is. <laughs> Ronda. Ronda Horn. Ronda, Ronda Horn. Ronda Horn. Ronda Horn. Ronda. First pitch to the inside corner, strike 1. Benson Rushmore is underway here at the top of the eighth inning, trying to protect this 6-1 lead. Two quick strikes to our old friend Ronda. Angry batter. Hits a little liner down the third baseline. Fair ball. Green picks it up, throws it, gets her. All right. Gets her. Here to go, Ruby. She got her, Pete. She <laughs> did. <laughs> they bear it over for Dose. Good power hitter. Five RBIs in the season. Only one long ball. First pitch misses ball. Baron. Baron Von David. Second pitch makes it in for a strike. Stupid alert. We're going to dismiss that dumb thing. Oops. 
Back in the game. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Sorry. That's alright. My computer sucks. They're inside oh. corner. This is ball two. Up. Two and one account. Today How much there. do you pay in you? Wow. Hard foul ball souvenir. First baseline. Knotted up at two apiece with one out. Top. Oh, get some low and inside. Great pitch there by Benson Rushmore. For his first K of the night. Number 45. Kingsley Savage, the Savage King. Shortstop for the Tacoma Arctics, the Washington Arctics. Good power hitter. Looking a little bit tense. Still could do damage to the outfield. going to play a little bit back for Mr. Savage. The Savage swinging for the fences but misses. Strike 2-0-2. Oh, Can Rushmore put him away where Bender couldn't? Number 44 winds up, throws it. Doesn't get him chasing low away. 1-2 and two to count. Fans here clapping for their team. Good good show by the Beebles. Little roller down the first base line. Oh, I, I thought Rushmore was going to tag him. He could have, yeah. Not. I was right there. It was a bang-bang play. <laughs> going into the bottom of the eighth. Arctics one, Beeble six, Billy LeBoyne two for four with a double, Laura Franco two for four, and Ruby Green two for three. Berger at 23 pitches, giving up two hits. Billy LeBoyne's neutral and fit favors the high pitch. He's got a double, a single, and an RBI today. Berger is getting the boot right here. So once again, the Beeble's are able to force teams to go deep into their pitching staff. And Burt Berger, the relief pitcher, is going to be relieved of duty. Tana Ramirez. Altana. As a I, Al it's an AI. Aitana. Aitana. Oh, it looks like an L. <laughs> Aitana Ramirez, the closing pitcher. Aitana Ramirez has a 2.7 ERA, a 1.2 whip, 10 strikeouts. She's locked in and fit. She's got amazing velocity. She's got about average junk, and she's got um, better accuracy. She's not fully rested, but she's very well rested. She's got a four-seam fastball and a curveball, and she is outperforming her career stats, Tommy, so she's off to a great start. <laughs> Billy LeBoink favors the high pitch. El Atana Oof. comes in with the first pitch. It's called strike. Strike one. A side That's a pitch. smash. That's going to Savage at shortstop. He'll pick it up, double pump, make the throw to Horn for the first down. Yeah, she's a little hard to read coming across the body. Alora Franco up two for four, two single. 372 on the season. Let's see if Laura can lead this pitch. Oh, she pops nope. that one up. Waving it off as a second baseman. Ranging out to get it. Erp, two up, two, two pitches, two outs. Three pitches. Three pitches, you're right, you're right. Ruby Green, the first baseman's locked in and fit two for three today. Known as an RBI man. First pitch is up. Ball one. That one's low, ball two. Two balls and no strikes. That one's popped up, foul. Out of play, into the stands. Mm -hmm. There you go. Two balls, one strike with two outs in the bottom of the eighth. That's a smash, and that's going deep, deep. Oh. And Flores is able to track it and hung up just long enough for Flores to get under it for the third out. But we're heading into the top of the ninth. Arctics need five to tie, six to uh, take the lead. It's six one B Wolves. Artichoke Samplemore, two for three. Nick Flores, two for three. Going to face off against Benson Rushmore. Artichoke Samplemore, the right fielder, is two for three with two singles. She's known around the league as a utility player. Playing left field today for the Arctic Sticks. The first pitch for a called strike. Strike one. Oh, it's inside. Ball one. One ball, one strike to Artichoke Samplemore. That one's a broken bat, foul ball. So grab a new piece of lumber. Step back in the box. One ball, two strikes with no outs in the top of the ninth. That's in there for a cold third strike. Artichoke Samplemore. Have a seat. <laughs> Nick Flores. The center fielder is neutral and fit. It's two for three with two singles. One out with nobody on in the top of the ninth. B Wolves holding on to that six to one lead. That's in there for a cold strike. Strike one. Benson Rushmore just throwing strikes, Tommy. I'm telling you. Except for that one. That one's <laughs> a ball. Ball one. One ball, one strike with one out. Flory's hitting 231 on the season. There's a roller, and Torrance is going to dive for it. Get up, make the throw, but not in time. So Nick Flory's gets a junk single. Number 39. Aitana Ramirez, the closing pitcher, is locked in and fit, but they're going to have to pull her for some offense, Tom. So Van Hangnail, the backup third baseman, is going to come in to pinch hit. Van Hangnail 
Vern Hangnail, I'm sorry, Vern Hangnail, is hitting 286 with one home run, three RBIs. He's neutral and fit. He's got less than average power. He's got about average contact, and he's got a little bit better than average speed on the base pass. He favors the inside pitch. So there's a runner at first base with one out. There's a roller, oh, yes. and Torrens is going to pick it. Oh, and they get the runner at second, but they were unable to turn two. So there's two outs with a runner at first, and Schnitzel Erp steps in two for three with two singles and an RBI. Two, a, two outs in the top of the ninth. Rushmore delivers in there for called strike. Strike one. No balls, one strike. <gasps> oh, and that's an errant throw by Benson Rushmore that's going to allow the runner to get from first to third again. Oh, oh. Jeez. <laughs> so another poor pickoff play, and that's really affected. Now Marshmore is tense, and his accuracy is hurt. No balls, one strike. That one's high. One ball, one strike with two outs in the top of the ninth. A runner at third base now. That's in there for cold strike, and Benson Rushmore has gotten out in front of Erp. Two, two, one ball, two strikes. Rushmore delivers his 24th pitch outside. Ball two, that evens the count up. Two and two. Rushmore delivers, and there's a roller. Oh, that's going to get through into the outfield. That run will for making it 6-2. B-Wolves with a runner at first base. Two outs, and Colton O'Neill steps in the catcher. He's 0 for 1 today, hitting .077. Rushmore is tense, but fit. His accuracy is taken out. Tumble, he's throwing his 26 pitch right there for a cold strike, strike one. Runner at first base has some speed. There's a roller, and Dexter is going to pick it up. Nope, nope, nope. And everybody's going to be safe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now there's runners at first and second with two outs, and in comes Chard Meza. Chard Meza is tense but fit. Two outs. Play the batter. There's a pop up, and that's going into right field. And Billy LeBoyne's able to get there and make the catch for the win. B Wolves win, Tommy. That was a good one. Uh -huh. Got a little tighter than the, there at the uh, end than it needed to be, but uh, in the end, the good guys win. Yeah, smack every wanted to come in, you could tell. <laughs> but they, they hang in with Rushmore. Looks like, uh, yeah, the Beagles jumped out to that early lead that they wanted a big time. Three three runs quickly. The uh, Arctics followed up and got one back right away to let them know they're going to be in this. Made it 3 1. Beagles jump out ahead again, though, let them know they're not going to lie down. And then they get two more in the six. That really put them out ahead uh, with six runs. Arctics able to salvage just one more in the top of the ninth, and they ended 6 2, 15 hits to nine. And both teams with errors. The Arctics in error, and the Beagles two, two times the pitcher threw over the first base, giving, yeah. uh, giving two bases to the runner. Yeah, that was that was troubling to see that. Um, but yeah, uh, 15 hits. I think it was another pretty good. I mean, even though the Arctics wind up with nine hits, I think the pitchers, uh, the Beagle pitchers, are doing a great job of keeping, um, keeping runners, you know, out of position you know I don't uh, not a whole lot of runners get in the second base um, you know so if they do get somebody on first they keep the ball on the ground in the infield so that they can either turn two or at least get the force out at second base so yeah great job yeah yeah the and they have uh, you know they got met mess off for the for the Arctics goes 0 for 5 um, yeah. Savage Kingsley Savage 0 for 4 these are these are hitters that really need to hit for that team um, Samplemore does well. She goes two for two for four, crosses the base once, and then Flores goes three for four. He had a great day. Erp goes also goes three for four. So they had some hitters who, who did well. They just couldn't quite, you know, get a lot out there. Yeah, they had three hitters. It looks like who who, who did well, um, and unfortunately they're spaced out. So you had Samplemore and Flores, and they might have been able to get something going. Um, if only they could have got Earp up there closer, maybe you could have gotten, you know, you could have forced a couple of runs across the plate. But uh, you figure Samplemore gets up with a single, Flores follows up with another mm, single, and then it fizzles. Yeah, it fizzles out. So, uh, yeah, yeah, not a whole lot of hitting there. Boy, I mean, Meza 0 for the day. You never want your leadoff hitter to go 0 for the day. Horn, 1 for 4. Yeah, yeah with a strikeout. So she got a strikeout, too. 
And then you follow that up with Baron and Savage, O for the day. So, I mean, you're literally going, your batters aren't, aren't helping you at all. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Your five and six give you a little bit of a, 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 some energy. Then you wind up your seventh. Um, doesn't help you out. And then your eighth. And then, of course, your ninth uh, is your pitcher. So that didn't help you out much either. So not like our pitcher. Right. It's the only home run for us on the day. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But you look at that. Dexter is two for four. Uh, what, I mean, one for four. Follow that up with a boy two for five. A Franco two for five. Green two for four. I mean, that's just that's a good hitting yeah. lineup right there. Bender two for three. I mean, he may have gone three for four if they let him hit that last one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, it was it was a toss up, but at that point he had you know he was well over a hundred pitches. He was pretty tired as it was, yeah. so even yeah, if, a good you know, move. Yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah, and then looking at the pitching, you got the Spencer takes the loss for the Arctic's. He throws five and a third innings. Uh, gets 13 hits, six earned runs, walks a batter. Not a good day for him. Gave up a home run to the other pitcher. So his ERA climbs to a 7.04, and he's now 1-4 and four on the season. A bad bad loss for him. Bert Berger, our old friend, comes in, throws one and two-thirds inning. Only gets two hits off him, which is respectable, considering he came in, uh, I think he was rattled, right? So, I mean. Yes, he was. He yeah. was. His, his year, he's at 8.84 now. He's uh, 0 and 1. He's got one save on the season. And then Ramirez comes in to close things out, throws an inning, puts up no stats, ends with an ERA of 2.51, uh, is 0 and 3 on the season. So really, it was, it was Spencer's loss. That's true. And then uh, over there for the B-Wolves, uh, Bender gets the win. He pitched seven innings, gave up seven hits, one earned run, one walk, had five strikeouts on the day. He, has, uh, he leaves with an ERA of 4.3, which is great because he was up. He was above five when we started, so he evens out that uh, record like Tommy was well, was hoping. He's had two wins and two losses. Uh, Benson Rushmore came in, pitched two innings, gave up two hits, one earned run, had two strikeouts. His ERA is at 5.25, and he's got a record of no wins, no losses, but one save. He does. And look at that. Players of the game. Three stars of the game, yeah. The first star is our superstar pitcher, Hurley Bender. He goes seven innings, gives up seven hits, one earned run, a walk, and five Ks. Has a and then hits a side of things. So, yeah, what a day! Yeah, the second star goes to the only Arctic's player on the board there, the the B ranked second baseman, number thirty six, Schnitzler. We were saying he had a good day, three for four, with two RBIs. So he did what he could for Tacoma. He was in on both of their runs. Yes, yes. And then the third star, the B-minus, Ruby Green, the first baseman who was playing third base for Bertha Banks today. She went two for four with two RBIs, and she scored a run. So way to go, Ruby. Yes. She's cooled off a little bit, but she's still, I mean, contributing. Yeah. And look at that. Tommy G, six hits, no home runs, three RBIs, no great catches, no stolen bases. I'm surprised we didn't steal more bases. Yeah. I think they were just pitching so fast. It was like, yeah, yeah you know, yeah, it just you couldn't get, couldn't find that good in. Yeah. Um, but both of their catchers don't really have that strong of arms. So I'm like, I'm going to, I'm going to run. I'm going <laughs> to Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no stolen bases, four strikeouts, no bean batters, and a uh, contribution of 49%. PJ with nine hits, one home run, three RBIs, two great catches, three strikeouts, and a contribution of 51%. Hmm. There you go. Then, yeah, post-game show. Well, another good win. Um, you know, we, we jacked up the, the difficulty level one, so we were kind of happy to come out. Through. That's a game we should have won and did. And, uh, and yeah, looking, looking solid. Now, this this uh, we got, um, geez, I want to tell you kind of where we're at in the standings. Should we just get, call these other scores now or no, I guess? Sure, we could do that. Um do we want to though? Is that what we want to do? <laughs> All right, let, let's do that this time. Just to change the pace. All right, 17 other games to call a score for Pete. Start us off with the Moose visiting the Hot Corners in St. Louis. All right, the Moose travel to meet up with the Hot Corners, and the Moose jump out to an early lead in the first inning. And ultimately, it's Moose all day, 14 to 9 over the Hot Corners. The Nemesis go face the Jacks. Jacks win a 2 1. Wild Pigs over the, uh, and the Gold Coats, and it's uh, Wild Pigs 8 to 4. Moonstars go to visit the Buzzards in, in Colorado, they win 4 1. 
The Crocs travel to take on the Blowfish, and it's Crocs five to nothing. Platypie at the wide loads. Wide loads take it one none. Herbasaurus travel to the Freebooters, and it's Freebooters five to four. Overdogs at the Sirloins. It's all Sirloins. Wow, fourteen oh, to one. Oh my god. The Grapplers travel to Oakland to take out the Outlaws, and it's Grapplers five o- Outlaws one. Freedom go all the way out to Hawaii to play the Burners, and it's a mistake. The Burners went three one. The Heaters take it on the front runners, and it's the Heaters out to an early lead, and boy, they beat up on the front runners 10 to 1. <laughs> wide loads out of San, San Jose at the Sharks, and the wide loads crush them 7 3. The Nemesis take on the Gold Coats, and it's Gold Coats 11, Nemesis 1. Those Wild Pigs here in Phoenix to face the Sandcats, and uh, as you would guess, the Wild Pigs win at 9 to 3. Herbisaurus take it on the Water Bullets, it's Water Bullets 2 to 1. Hot Corners go to the Cone and face the Arctics, beat them 2 0. The Warblers travel to meet the Moose, and it's Moose two to one over the Warblers. Ooh, that's a mouthful! Wow, that was a, that was a last drinking from the firehouse. Okay, Pete, Pioneer Conference, Pathfinder Division, start us. Pathfinder Division: The Crocodons, with a record of thirteen and four, have a four-game lead over the second-place Blowfish, who are with sitting with a record of nine and eight. In the Uncharted Division, you got the, those Wild Pigs are, are hot. Fourteen, I think, yeah, best record in the league right now. Fourteen and four. With a plus 49 run differential, they've got a three and a half game lead against the two second place teams, the Platypi and the Outlaws, who are 10 and 10 and 7, and they're in second place by three and a half games. Holy cow! Down in the Journey Division, the Grapplers, with a record of 10 and 8, have sole possession of first place with the Sandcats, two games back with a record of 8 and 10. So almost that you know flipped the records. Grapplers 10 and 8, Sandcats 8 and 10. Yeah, we got uh, both both Phoenix teams in second place. So in the Explorer Conference, our conference, the Seafair Division, those Houston Jacks up at the top where they normally are, but with a negative nine run differential, they're ten and seven, which would put them in second place in the Ontario Division. <laughs> but they have a two and a half game lead against the, uh, as you would guess at the both the Philadelphia Frontiers and the Heaters. Uh, down in the Trade Division, the Sirloin. Take a have a 12 and 5 record, and they maintain a one game lead over our very own B Wolves, who are sitting in second place with a record of 11 and 6. They're one game back, but breathing down their necks, the water billets are a uh, half game behind them with a record of 11 and 7. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty close. It's a good, 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 good it is. shot this year. Fishing up the Curiosity Division, the San Diego Moon Stars, who I think we're playing against next. First place at 13 and 4. And they are three and a half games ahead of those saw teeth who are ten and eight. Yes, that will bring us to our next thing. We're gonna range out to San Diego to play those 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 moon stars and slip souders starting that one, Pete. If you look at the um, at the league leaders, slip souders usually in there. Yep. Oh no, Alicia Woodrow is in there. Um but but if we go let's see if we go down to what, what's the matter with the Moonstars photographer? Why can't, why can't you take good pictures? <laughs> oh, you got a bunch of weird glitchy pictures? Yeah, it's like Slip Souter is uh, is cut off. I mean, it's like his uh, right shoulder, and then the same with uh, Hackman at third base. It's just his right shoulder. I don't see, oh. I can't see his face. I'm looking for pitching. Okay, pitching here. Slip Souter is usually in there. But he's not. I don't see him. I thought he was one of the... One of the better uh, pitchers for the. Oh, maybe not. Maybe I'm. Alicia Woodrow's doing it here. Okay, well, just that is what it is. Okay, well, there you go. The batting average in the league. We have the top three batting averages. Four three five. Do four, we? Six, four, yeah, Billy the Boink, Gina Torrance, Magic Moore. Wow. Okay, well, we we don't want to take up too much here. Um, we got some training opportunities and player development stuff going on there, but we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that at, at another time. But okay, so I guess so. Our next game, you're looking at our schedule again. Yeah, we're going to head out to to San Diego for the move. We got a little bit of a road trip here, California road trip. We're going to start in San Diego, get some Moon Stars, and then go on up to face the Gold Coast before coming home to host the Heaters. That'll be a good one. Our first uh, shot at uh, at the Heaters, um, who sit in first place just above us. So that'll be that'll be a good game. Yeah. Now we haven't done we haven't done the. Uh, this is our our first game against the Moon Stars as well, right? Yeah, I believe we're so. Gonna, we're going to play them again later on in the season. We're going to host them. So this is our first of two 
meetings against the moon stars coming up. All right. Well, until then, Pete and I will see you in San Diego. This is Tommy G. And this is Pete J. And we're saying, get out of here.